Meta just killed native WhatsApp on Windows 11. It now relies on a web view, which uses 1 GB of RAM all the time. What? This title alone should make you stop and think for a moment, because it signals a major shift not only in native app development, but in how software companies are looking at performance and user experience these days. WhatsApp for Windows started like so many other modern apps as an Electron cross-platform solution. Of course, all these apps are known for being bloated and hungry for resources. So Meta replaced its WhatsApp Electron app with a native WinUI solution that was lightweight and had better integration with Windows features. But now, a few years into the native solution, Meta is abandoning that entire effort and WhatsApp is again a Chromium-based shell that loads a web app under the hood. And the initial results are brutal. While the old native WinUI app could idle at under 20 MB of RAM and hover around 100 MB in regular use, the new WebView version sits at 1.2 GB doing nothing, spikes past 2 GB while loading chats, and can hit 3 GB if you're actually using it. All this so you can run a chat app where all your relatives and friends groups are muted anyway. So, let's rewind. The eighth largest company in the world, with a market cap of $1.5 trillion, decides to basically stop supporting an app with 3 billion monthly active users on the operating system that runs on more than 60% of the consumer desktop market. If this sounds absurd, you are right. But this is the reality we live in, and there are a few takeaways we really should pay attention to if we are involved in the software world. First of all, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but native development is being systematically dismantled because companies simply don't want to pay for it. Don't get me wrong, having a few dedicated developers to maintain a proper Windows client means absolutely nothing for a company like Meta. This is a company that is literally laying subsea fiber optic cables across the entire continent of Africa, among many other things. But there is no incentive for them to waste any kind of effort on something as boring as a Windows desktop client that doesn't generate any growth or any investor interest. And if Meta plays this game, trust me, all other companies, regardless of size, will soon follow in their footsteps. If Meta can afford to ship terrible software that eats half your computer memory so that you can send over some borderline racist meme to your friends, then this must be the new norm. If WhatsApp can do it, so can we, will be the perfect excuse to cut down on any native development efforts and funnel everything into a single bloated web codebase held together by good old JavaScript spaghetti code and a bloated React app that can take down half of the internet because of a faulty use effect hook. Ok, now, there are two main takeaways to this story, and both of them are equally important for the future of software development. First of all, this might sound harsh, but Windows, and in general, desktop operating systems are no longer a priority. These days, software is mobile first, web second, and everything else is an afterthought at best. Think about it. You waste most of your time cycling through the same four apps on your phone, and whenever you are using your laptop, the first thing you are doing is opening a browser. And, if this is the trend, companies will take note and adapt accordingly. So, naturally, there will be less opportunities for software developers specializing in specific platforms, and the job market will tilt harder towards full-stack generalists who can find a way to use JavaScript to build web apps, games, microcontrollers, and probably even rockets. Jeff Atwood saw this almost 20 years ago, when he famously stated his law. Any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. And, to our surprise, it looks like all applications can be written in JavaScript if you are brave enough. Second of all, and this is kind of tough to admit, software quality doesn't really matter anymore. Jonathan Blow, who is one of the best developers of this generation, does a great job explaining this in his Preventing the Collapse of Civilization talk. In his opinion, modern software is low quality, brittle and accumulating technical debt at a civilizational scale. He ties bad abstractions, lack of rigor and declining engineering standards to long-term systemic risk. And, if you look around, he is completely on point. This is the new normal. Bad performance, high memory usage, zero offline capability, and features that break randomly because they were never designed for the platform they're running on. And the industry is normalizing it. Developers are building it, users are tolerating it, and companies are profiting from it. Hardware is getting better and cheaper, so we can now afford to eat gigabytes of RAM to exchange some messages over the network. Long gone are the days when talented developers rolled up their sleeves and created an operating system in three weeks. We now have agile teams, scrum rituals, planning sessions, code reviews, planning poker, sprint retrospectives, Microsoft Teams, Slack, Jira dashboards, Confluence pages, stand-ups, sync meetings, async updates, alignment docs, senior developers, architects, consultants, product owners, delivery managers, but not a working product. So, the conclusion of this video is kind of bitter because it's little we developers can do to change things. 
Business decisions and profits dictate priorities, so the trajectory is fixed long before any engineer touches a keyboard. Companies want things fast and cheap, and the good part is not even in the discussion. But if there is a silver lining, is that all this pile of garbage combined with AI slop we push out daily as software will need a lot of maintenance and babysitting. So, once again, I think that the software developer job is going to be safe for a few more decades. Sure, cleaning up bad code is not the best job in the world, but it's honest work. If you enjoyed my rambling about software topics, you should check out one of these videos next. Please don't forget to click on all the buttons YouTube is throwing at you these days, and until next time, thank you for watching.